Hey guys, it's uh, Bill Griggs, um, the CNC Router Tips, and I just thought that I would give you an update on where I am with the, uh, the Tormach uh, PCNC 1100 mil that uh, I recently uh, began building and, and you know I've been working on. Now, um, there's been a lot of progress in in the in the last uh, uh, since the last time that you saw anything here. We've gotten the enclosure up. Um, you know, with the sliding doors, the whole nine yards. Um, got the uh, milling vise in place and, and trammed up, and um, you know the auto tool changer is in. Um, today's project was uh, the coolant. We got the coolant uh, going again, so things are, are really moving along as far as um, you know being able to use this thing uh, the way I want to. Uh, one of the tools that I got to help me uh, with the setup of this machine um, really uh, should decrease the amount of time it takes me to do things uh, with this machine. Now, the Tormach um, system of tooling is called the TTS system, uh, Tormach tooling system, and it gives you um, these tool holders which have you know the same chamfer on the end three three quarter inch shaft on them you know this one is an ER20 collet uh, this one is another um, tool this is a shear hog which is an indexable um, cutter it has one cutting edge that you can see there and um, get a little bit of focus there you know and that does all the cutting for this thing but uh, What's cool about these is when you put them up into the spindle, this little ring here indexes them all to the same height. So once you've measured these um, tools, unless you take the tool out of the holder, uh, you're good. You never have to worry about you know how long the tool is, and the program remembers that for you. So when you uh, put in a tool into the spindle, uh, you've got to set the tool length and you've got to set the um, work offset length and one of the things that's going to help me with that is this tool that I, I got with my package um, it's a Heimer Zero Master uh, it's a very precise very expensive um, indicator it's similar to a, a dial indicator except it works in X Y and Z you know they call it a 3D indicator so um, you know when you get it it comes in two boxes this is the case you, you keep it in after you take it out of this box um, and the reason they ship it to you this way is so that they can include uh, the Tormach um, tool holder which um, you know allows this device to be used with the Tormach system you can see it's another holder with a set screw and a, a bore on it and the Heimer will slip up into this and then it will slip up into the spindle so um, you know I have to put that together and calibrate it before uh, before we can do anything now inside this box okay they've got instructions in here and that's probably what's holding me up here yeah, an instruction sheet very tight fit on the box Okay, got it open and uh, top of a blooper reel. Inside there is an adjustment key. It's an Allen wrench. So thankfully we didn't lose that. And now here is the instrument itself, the Heimer Zero Master. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that. Okay, and as you can see, it's got a, a dial on it with two um, indicators. Um, each one has a zero, and as this tip is deflected, 
up or down or uh, to the side these go around and when you reach zero on both of them uh, you're aligned now I was pushing up on the Z but you could go from X from the side and it would still deflect in either direction or you can go fore and aft and it would still deflect so anyway this whole thing has got to go up inside of that um, Tormach collet that I uh, showed you a second ago and it will all go up into the spindle and then we'll be able to measure things with it now one thing I want to point out you can see this uh, this little ceramic tip here that it has and that's designed to break if you you know bang into something uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing um, it's bad if you don't have an extra one laying around and you break it because uh, it's going to take a while to get one uh, it's good because it won't damage the instrument so um, when I ordered this I ordered an extra tip and I probably should have ordered two but we'll see I'm going to go put this down somewhere safe <laughs> now before I can use this um, or any of the, the tools that, that uh, Tormach sends you, these tool holders um, you have to degrease them. You got to take them out of the package, and you can feel that they're 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 lightly oiled or, or whatever. And if you look, you can you can see it on, on my hands. Um, and you got to get rid of that if you expect it to work um, in the tool. And you can use WD-40 or brake cleaner, depending on, on what you um, you have. So I'm just going to take a little of this cleaner. get started cleaning this off. You can wear gloves if you need to. Um, but you want to make sure you get all the surfaces okay and when you're done you can see got a lot of gunk off of this and you know that makes me feel better about it because I uh, got it clean and I know it's uh, it's going to be all right. Okay, we've got the Heimer installed inside of the spindle. Um, and now we've got to make sure that the uh, tip is concentric. If it's not, then we can adjust it. There's uh, some set screws one, two, three, four that we can adjust. Okay, now that we've got the uh, Heimer calibrated, um, so how do you use the thing? Well, it's basically a touch uh, plate um, for most of us with a combination dial indicator. So. Uh, in order to find the zero point in the X, we'd move over, um, jog over in X, so that we're outside the part, jog down in Z, until we're below the edge the part that we want to measure okay then we're going to jog that way with the table so that it touches against the side of this ball and I'm going to do that uh, by clicking on the x-axis and I'm going to use the jog wheel to do that now, so you can see it I'm going to move in small increments or I could use the uh, wheel to get close. Now notice on the dial that the uh, needle hasn't moved, but when it touches, 
the um, needle will start to move. And once that starts to move, I switch over to the inside ring. And I take that needle around one time and then continue on. And when I get near zero, I'm slowing down because I'm going to reduce the step size so I can get really fine control. Okay, you can see the needle moving away. Now I move it towards the zero. When I get to zero up here, zero up here, this one is also zero down there. And that's how I know I'm exactly over the center of the edge of the part. So I could come into my uh, digital readouts for the x-axis and I could zero that off. And I can move away. And I'm going to jog up. So that I'm out of the way, and then I'm going to move the table back, and you can see why I moved the the pointer up out of the way, so that I don't accidentally go in the wrong direction at the wrong time. Bring the tool down, tool tip down below the edge here of the uh, back side. Yeah. Then I'm going to jog the Y until we touch. You can see we're already touching. I'll switch over to thousands. Take it around twice. Switch to tenths. And that's it. I can zero my DRO for the Y axis. That was only off by um, six tenths. Okay, now I can raise the um, spindle up. Now, if I want to measure the top of the piece, I'm going to take this top surface over here. So far we've set the X and Y, and now we're setting the Z height. And we plunge until the uh, ball touches the top of the surface and begins to deflect the needle. We go around twice. That's the first one. Second one. And that's the zero point. So we can set the Z zero as well. So we set the X, Y, and Z zero uh, for this part that quickly. And now, if we switch out any of the other tools that have already been measured, um, we should be good to go.